So one of the interesting things happening in this election is, of course, Sarawak. Uh, many people outside Sarawak expect uh, GPS to steamroll over the election results in Sarawak. But what they do not know is that there's actually a group of smaller parties in Sarawak which has come together and they call themselves uh, basically a PSB, Stroke PBK. And these are a group of uh, local parties coming together, hoping to fight uh, you know, for more rights of Sarawak, more autonomy. And also uh, they are offering Sarawakians a sort of a different political platform from those of GPS. So I'm very happy that I'm able to contact my good friend, uh, Dr. Lawrence Lai, the former mayor of Miri, who is currently standing for PSB Stroke PBK. So good morning, Dato. So it's been a week into the campaign. How do you see the campaign unfolding? Yeah, I think it's uh, going smoothly, but the weather is uh, very bad. Evening is uh, mostly rainy. So Charama is uh, not well attended because of the weather. Even now, right. uh, I went to Tudan, uh, Sanadin area in the northern part of Sarawak. There's also heavy rain. So this shows that Amno uh, is only keen to, for this whole election, knowing it's a flooding season, rainy season. And I think the people should know that they're holding this election only for themselves. And they don't care about the welfare of the people. All right, Dato. So Dato, I think in Sarawak, PSB, Strop PBK is widely known. Uh, but what about the rest of Malaysia? I think people have never really heard of you guys. So can you tell us exactly what does PSB stroke PBK? What do you guys stand for? Uh, as for PSB is Parti Sarawak Bersatu, and PBK is Parti Bumi Kenyalan. We are not so well known in Malaya because our focus is Sarawak. Our main focus, our main purpose is to service the people of Sarawak and to our, our manifesto shows. Our theme is Restore Sarawak, meaning Restore Sarawak's rights, resources, and all the privileges uh, under MA63 that has been taken, stolen, robbed, or cheated away from Sarawak by the Malayan parties. All right, that's so all. We, we, are not so much, uh, for, we are not so much keen to campaign in Malaya, but uh, we, our, our, our main objective is to service the people of Sarawak and that uh, we are not against Malaya or what, but we actually hope to work with people of Sabah so that together, uh, as uh, Abang Joe of GPS said, we are equal partners. So I think we focus in Sarawak. All right. Thank you, Dato. So uh, in terms of, you know, basically what you're saying, right, you are Sarawak nationalist, but GPS is saying the same thing. So why should people vote for you rather than GPS? Well, I think GPS is uh, talk only, cakap saja. Yesterday in Miri, to in conjunction with Cebu, with uh, PSB President Datuk Sri Wong Sung Ko and uh, PBK Secretary General uh, Priscilla Lau, they are standing in Cebu and Ladang. Our we have uh, pledged to the people of Sarawak, and for me in Miri, that if elected, we will table a private member's bill to parliament for the referendum act. Parti Kengelan uh, been, uh, been campaigning on one issue and that is independence. Independence for Sarawak. So I'm very happy that our party president and the party president of two parties with Von, Von Lee San, uh, Wong Sung Ko have agreed that we will table a bill in parliament for referendum for Sarawak independence. So that is the best test because a lot of Sarawakians are unhappy. And I, this is the, also the test that if GPS is truly Sarawak first, they should support this private member's bill to table in parliament. So let the Sarawakian decide once and for all whether they want to stay in Malaysia or whether they want to quit. This is the most peaceful way because a lot of people are worried about bloodshed, trouble, and so on. So put it to the people of Sarawak on one issue, to stay or to leave Malaysia. So let the people vote. And uh, this is the, also the constitutional way and the correct way because referendum 
if approved, has to be conducted by SPR, the Election Commission, to conduct an election for Sarawakian. Let the people of Sarawak vote for themselves once and for all to leave or to quit. Thank you, Dato. And I, 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 I challenge GPS whether they will support us. So far, there's no response. Thank you, Dato. So I think a lot of the viewers are watching this channel uh, will be shocked by your statement about uh, private members' view of a referendum to take Sarawak out of Malaysia. So can you just briefly summarize for us why are the people of Sarawak so unhappy to be in the Federation? Um, <clears throat> for a start, um, Pakatan Harapan government in 2018 promised the Sarawakians 20% uh, 20, 20 royalty and 50% refund of uh, tax revenue. But after that, when Tun Mahathir became the PM under Pakatan Harapan, he just turned around and said, Manifesto is not a Bible. He doesn't have to follow it. To add salt to injury, within one month of Pakatan Harapan government, instead of giving us the promised increase of 20%, they instructed Petronas to sue Sarawak government. So that is not only uh, going back on the promise, but it's a big slap of the face of the Sarawak government. Then the Sarawak government engaged in the high court suit, claiming for the payment of 5% sales tax on oil and gas. And the Sarawak government won the case, but instead they settled the case out of court. I have been asking the GPS government to explain, having won the court case, number one, why do they settle? with Petronas. Number two, what are the terms and settlement for the out-of-court settlement? Terms and condition. Number three, there was a mock check for about two billion for 2019 uh, sales tax. Was that two billion payment is a mock check? I'm just asking a simple question. Has that two billion been paid? If so, when? Now, what about 2020 sales tax? Has it been paid? 2021, 2022, four years sales tax. Next, um, the, our Sarawak Law uh, Minister, YB Sharifa, also in her press statement signed with Petronas Chairman that they will reduce, even to, as a terms of settlement, they will reduce the 5% sales tax gradually. I asked, having won the court case, why do you settle and reduce it? Because the 5% is mandatory under the Sarawak law, passed under OMO, Oil Mining Ordinance. Number three, is it true or is it a settlement, a terms of the settlement, that in return for payment of 5% sales tax, did they recognize PDA, Petroleum Development Act? Because when... Pakatan Harapan was the government, they sued uh, Sarawak government. The GPS lawyers, including PBB lawyers, SUPP lawyers, PRS and SPDP lawyers, they do a roadshow in Kuching, Cebu, Miri, Bindulu. And I attended the roadshow. And each of the lawyers from the four parties tell us that PDA is illegal, unconstitutional. If that is the stand, why did they recognize, did they, Sarawak government, in return for 5% sales tax, did they or did they, did they not recognize PDA in return for the return, in return of the payment? They have not answered my question. And I think because through your professor, you are neutral, you are independent, you are the best party also to ask, what are the terms of settlement? How much have been paid? And did they recognize PDA having, having gone around the roadshow saying that it is illegal, it's unconstitutional. I can quote you the names of the lawyers because I attended the roadshow in Miri, in the Miri uh, the City Library. So these are the issues. The people are unhappy because having been the kingmaker without GPS 18 seats, 
the 2020 uh, backdoor government would not have been formed. 2021, they again, the second backdoor government through the Sheraton move, they not only, the first round was with Pai Ikata National, Muhyiddin. Number two is with AMNO and PAS. And that is when that year I resigned because uh, I resigned actually from SUPP August 31st because I have been saying year in, year in, year out, August 31st is a Malaya Madeka. It has nothing to do with Sarawak Independence Day, which is on 7 2 2. And yet, Sarawak celebrate Malaya Madeka Day. August 31st, as if it's Hari Kebangsaan. We Sarawakians should know, or Otri not Sarawakian, Malaysians should know, National Day or Hari Kebangsaan is 916, September 16. But they, Malaysia Day has always been already celebrated in Sarawak, as if it's our own internal matter, which is all wrong. And these things have been going on. Now, back to the kingmaker. Being the kingmaker and being said that we are equal partner, yet you just look at our uh, national budget. This year, we are getting only 1.4%. Uh, last year, about 1.4%, 1.5%. This is not a kingmaker. In my campaign, I say we are beggar king. We are not kingmaker. Kingmaker should get a good fair share of the budget. And yet, our GPS leader will justify that because economy is bad, we should be happy with a lower location. This is not in uh, consistent with a kingmaker. Example, our premier announced uh, a few days ago, Lawas will have a 600 million uh, budget of funding for Lawas Airport. And they said that the government will pay first. This is not Kingmaker, if you announce a project for Lawas, I don't know why they need a 600 million airport, but they pay first. In Kuching, they announced a cancer hospital. I think we all need a better hospital, cancer hospital. We are, I'm not against it, but what I'm against it is why the government having announced a 100 million cancer hospital, again, they say, Oh, we will pay our own money first. Huh? You can refund us later. We are not, I and mean, without government, uh, GPS support, there is no, uh, I'm no government. So people here, when we go around, they're very unhappy. They say, do not let uh, Najib out from prison. And they want to see Rospa go to prison and so on. So I All right, that's all. Say, yes. Okay, so, okay, Dato, time is running out. So tell us, uh, how do you feel or what do you think uh, PBM and uh, PSB, how well do you think they'll do in this election? How many seats do you guys expect to win? Um, I think I'm. this is not for me to say, but I just hope the people in Sarawak will wake up that uh, GPS talk for me and uh, PH, Pakatan and DIP answer only to the Malayan bosses. Whatever they are, the Malayan bosses, you don't blame them. The Malayan bosses look after the Malayan people. So for the people of Sarawak, if you really want someone to look after, safeguard your interests and restore Sarawak rights, please vote for our local best party. Uh, that is PSP, PBK, PBDS, and we are supported by S4S. And uh, I, think, I think the people of Sarawak have been more than patient. We have waited 59 years. Pan Borneo is still going to be completed as the work minister from Sarawak say we take another three or four years. I think by the next GE16, they will be still saying the same, same thing. So I think we have enough. And going back to the referendum act, give us a chance, table the bill in parliament, let the Sarawakian people decide whether they want to stay in Malaysia or they want to quit. I think that is our manifesto, which is to restore Sarawak. And referendum is the easiest, is the most effective way that urge all the Sarawakian uh, MP to be elected, Borneo MP to be elected, 
to support this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Dato. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Good Thank luck. You. Thank you. I'm Chalon number two, P219 Miri. Please vote for me, Lawrence Lai, Chalon number two, PSP, in P219 Miri. Thank you, Professor James.